am Mr. True. In this video, we're going to go fly a kite. And that means we're going to be introduced to a four-sided figure, uh, <clears throat> quadrilateral, uh, that has two pairs of consecutive sides which are congruent, and yet no opposite sides are allowed to be congruent. And it is the shape of a kite. You know, go out in the wind and uh, have yourself some fun. So we have a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral, and you know, and as I wrap around and go consecutively, just wrap around the quadrilateral, um, you know, these two sides right here, now these aren't congruent. You know, this has got two tick marks and this has one. But as I continue to wrap around, I do find that I have a pair over here and a pair over here, a pair, two pair of consecutive sides which are congruent. Now we have to add this little extra in here that we don't have opposite sides which are congruent as well, because if we did, well, then we'd be talking about a rhombus and not a kite. So there's a lot of properties <clears throat> other than this basic structure of a uh, kite that uh, I'm not sure if my book is going to introduce later on, but um, it kind of just gives us one theorem and then just starts going through examples. And then some of these properties I'm going to bring up are kind of like, you know, quietly derived or, or used in the text without, I don't think, really clarifying uh, it enough. So I'm going to do it for us here. The diagonals of a kite are going to be perpendicular. So we have a diagonal here uh, connecting these two sides, or these two vertices, which are uh, not formed by, or they are formed by the non-congruent sides, and we have a diagonal going this way. And these diagonals are going to be perpendicular, and they're not just going to be perpendicular, they're going to be also, um, there's going to be some bisection going on. The diagonals from the vertices included between the non-congruent sides is, or actually be the diagonal, the diagonal from the vertices included between the non-congruent sides is bisected by the diagonal from the vertices included between the congruent sides. I'm trying to write these, you know, using this math knowledge or uh, vocab that we have of included. That means formed. So this diagonal that is connecting the vertices that are formed by the two sides which are not congruent is being bisected by the diagonal that is connecting or between the vertices that are formed by the congruent, the consecutive congruent sides. That's what I'm trying to say here. And uh, I'm going to include a, a two-column proof at the end of the video for this particular um, property. Now, I'm going to do that, that proof. Uh, we're also going to have a couple, I think, three algebraic examples um, working with the sides and angles of these trapezo uh, these kites in this video. But the last two-column proof, I'm going, to, I'm going to prove that these two segments are congruent, but first I'm going to get the phone. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Uh, so yes, this diagonal is going to get bisected. We're going to prove that later using some congruent triangles. Uh, we can also see it, though, uh, just to kind of recall some old concepts and theorems and stuff. But we can also see that, remember, that if a point is on a, you know, if you have a point and this point is equal distance to the endpoints of another segment, then that point is on a perpendicular bisector. I'm not going to use that property to do the proof. I'll leave that up to you or maybe your textbook or, or uh, to do in class. But um, yeah, if you have a point that's an equal distance to the endpoints of a, um, another segment, then that point itself is on a perpendicular bisector. The opposite angles included or formed by, again, the non-congruent sides are going to be congruent. I have a trap, uh, excuse me, I keep saying trapezoid. I have a kite here. I have one diagonal drawn through here. I'm not going to do a proof for this, but I'll just quickly talk about it. I mean, look how I have this, um, this diagonal drawn through our kite. We would be able to say with a very, very short proof that this triangle and this triangle are congruent due to side, side, and the reflexive property, a third side. These two triangles are congruent due to side, side, side. And these two angles then would be corresponding parts of congruent triangles, which are themselves congruent. So again, the angles formed by the non-congruent sides or included between the non-congruent sides are going to be congruent, always in a kite. The diagonal between the vertices that are included uh, in the congruent sides are formed by the congruent sides. That diagonal is going to bisect those opposite angles. Uh, again, I can say that this angle is congruent to this angle if, in a proof, I've said these two triangles are congruent, which they are, again, by side, side, side. So these two angles are going to be congruent to, to corresponding parts of congruent triangles, 
which means that, uh, let's see, let's uh, use a different color here, that <clears throat> those two angles are going to be congruent, uh, which makes this diagonal a bisector of this angle. And for the same reason, these two angles are going to be congruent due to, again, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So yes, the diagonal that connects or goes between the angles that are included or formed by the congruent sides are going to bisect those opposite angles. So quite a few properties uh, that are nice in kites, nice meaning uh, we can come up with some good questions about you uh, working out, uh, you know, finding measurements of missing angles and missing sides and so on. And we're about to do those right now. We're going to do three examples, remember. Here are three examples. We've got a um, kite over here, um, kite A, B, C, D. We have a couple diagonals, and we want to find the measure of all the angles I've marked with uh, these values of 1, 2, 3, and 4. The only information I'm giving us here is, of course, this is a kite, uh, one and two pair of consecutive sides, and this angle right here, angle uh, E, C, D, is 68 degrees, and we're going to use that to find the measurements of angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, well, the measure of angle 1, that's very straightforward as long as you remember that the diagonals of a kite intersect in a perpendicular fashion. So, the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, um, let's turn our attention to, let's say, angle 4. Now, I'm looking at this triangle, triangle E, C, D. And, of course, the interior sum of a triangle has to be equal to 180 degrees. So, within this triangle of E, C, D, we've got uh, a 68 degree angle, we have a 90 degree angle, and whatever's left here for the measure of angle 4 must make these three angles inside this triangle add up to 180 degrees. So, the measure of angle 4 is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus the 90 that we have for angle 1, and another minus, taking out that 68 degrees we have here, and whatever's left over is uh, our final answer. So we have 180 minus 90 is going to be 90 degrees. Uh, 90 degrees, which is left after taking away this first 90. Uh, 90 minus 60 is equal to 30, and 30 minus 8 is equal to 22 degrees. So again, the measure of angle 4 is 22. So if we know that the measure of angle 4 is 22 degrees, then we know what the measure of angle 3 is. Because remember, the angles are, that are, are formed by the congruent pairs. So this angle of ABC, and here's another congruent uh, set of sides, angle ADC, those angles are bisected by the diagonal. So whatever the measure of angle 4 is, is the measure of angle 3. So the measure of angle 3 is also equal to 22 degrees. Now, <clears throat> what is the uh, measure of angle 2? Well, uh, I don't have to do any more work to figure that out either. Uh, remember, let's see here. Uh, there's a couple ways to approach this. I think what I'm going to do here is remind you that um, we have two triangles in here, and remembering, of course, that our diagonals, again, intersect in a perpendicular fashion. So we have triangle ADE and triangle CDE. Those are both going to be right triangles. And not only are they right triangles, but they're also congruent right triangles. I can prove that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle because of hypotenuse leg. And angle 2 is a corresponding, or a, yeah, it's a corresponding angle to this angle in here that I've marked off as being 68 degrees. So if this is 68 degrees, then the measure of angle 2 is also equal to 68 degrees. And again, um, I kind of like verbally just talked through a little, through a little proof there, right? Uh, reflexive property, ED is congruent to ED. That means that with hypotenuse leg, we have two right triangles which are congruent and the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are themselves congruent. So another little uh, tidbit or example of why we stress in the beginning of geometry especially, um, you know, the use of the two column proofs and building up this logic skill, uh, and of course, you know, give you an opportunity to uh, 
uh, reinforce your memorization of all these theorems and concepts and postulates and definitions that we're giving you because we're still doing them to solve these problems, um, <clears throat> even though we're not writing a two-column proof. Well, what do we got going on here? We have a trap, uh, excuse me, a kite again, uh, and we're looking for the measures of angle one and two. There's a few ways to do this. We can look, I think I want to do is just look at this entire kite at once. Now this kite again is a quadrilateral, right? It's got four sides. And <clears throat> we know that the interior angles, uh, the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is equal to the number of sides minus two times 180, or n minus two times 180. So I have four sides, four minus two is two, and two times 180 degrees is 360. So these four angles are going to add up to 360 degrees. Now you might be going, well, okay, but we have angle one and angle two. That's, you know, it appears, you know, if these are two different unknown values, then I can't make one equation to solve for them right off the bat. But we can because remember, these angles are congruent. Uh, it's one of the properties I talked to you about in the previous window. So that means that the this angle here, which is 90 degrees, plus you know this unknown value, and I think I'm just going to let this be x because both measure of angle or both angle one and angle two have the same measure uh, in this kite. So it's going to be 90 plus two times x plus 42. So again, I've taken, okay, one, two, three, four. I'm taking my four angles, one, two, and this additional two, which makes four. And I want to make sure that those add up to 360 degrees. So we have two X. We have like terms here on the left-hand side, so we're going to add those. Nine and four is 13, so 90 and 40 is 130. It's 132. Subtract both sides by 132 to undo that addition. And we have 2x, uh, we have 360, we have 260, we have 230, now we've got 228. And divide both sides by x, or excuse me, 2. We're going to divide both sides by 2 to get the x alone. And x is equal to 114 degrees, if you want to make sure that you're right. Make sure that 114 plus 114 plus 42 plus 90 is equal to 360 degrees, and you'll be good to go. I'm just going to look at my notes, and I'm in agreement. Excellent. Okay, so for our last example, we're going to look at this kite over here, and we have a much more complicated scenario here. Uh, first of all, I'm not giving you any exact values of any of these angles, and uh, I want to solve for, let's just say we'll solve for x and y. Actually. We're going to, I can say solve for x and y, but we're going to have to actually know the measures of these angles as well to be able to solve this problem. So uh, we'll find the measures of the missing angles as well as the unknown values. Well, we have, again, those angles that are formed by the consecutive non-congruent sides are going to be equal to themselves. Again, side, side, and a shared side. Side, side, side shows that, uh, or side, side, side shows these two triangles are congruent, congruent parts of... Uh, Congruent triangles are congruent. So we got 2x plus 10 is equal to 4x minus 90. We're going to solve this for x. We're going to bring this 2x over. I like to avoid the negatives, so I don't mind if my x is on the right-hand side. We have 10 is equal to 2x minus 90. Add both sides by 90. Get 100 equals 2x. Divide by 2. And x is equal to 50. And uh, I'm going to run out of room. So I'm going to pause this video real quick. I'm going to take this uh, value of 50. I'm going to plug it into each of these expressions. Uh, actually, I could fill that in here. 4 times 50 minus 90. Uh, 4 times 50 is 200. Minus 90 is 110 degrees. And if you plug 50 back up into here, we get 110 degrees as well. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to fill up these two angles as, uh, with the information that they're 110 degrees and uh, finish this example. Last example. We have a kite, uh, kite A, B, C, D. Very original name, I know. And uh, we're told that A, B is congruent to A, D and that B, C is congruent to D, C. 
Um, I actually could have just given you this information and had you draw the diagram on your own. Okay, uh, I want to prove that this diagonal that connects the vertices created by the congruent sides, um, or included, uh, bisects this diagonal BD. Now, we can also do a proof. There was a proof in my book about it being a perpendicular bisector, and it is. Um, but <clears throat> I didn't want to do the exact same proof. That was already in the textbook. Uh, and you can see, because it, and it's, it's a pretty simple one, too. I want to recall the... the um, the knowledge that we learned about congruent triangles and the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I mentioned that a couple times in this video already as well. Uh, but just to reinforce the old concepts as well as the new ones, uh, you can talk about these two um, diagonals being perpendicular bisectors using the perpendicular bisector theorem uh, for segments. You know, when you have a point which is an equal distance to the endpoints of that segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector. And you can say, well, that A is on the perpendicular bisector, C is in the perpendicular bisector, thus this is a perpendicular bisector, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just going to state, you know, that it was, it was a property that I gave us. The first thing I said was the diagonals were perpendicular, and then I said this diagonal was bisected by this one, and that's what we're going to prove. Uh, being just using the fact that for kites, our diagonals are perpendicular. Um, <clears throat> So again, how am I going to show that B, you know, how am I going to show that BD was bisected? Well, I'm going to show that it was bisected by proving that E is the midpoint, or that BE is congruent to ED. And we're going to do that by highlighting and focusing on, uh, I can do it either side, but I'm going to focus on these two triangles here. Triangle, um, excuse me, CED and triangle CBE and show that those two, uh, did I say that right? C-E-D and C-E-B. Uh, and show that those two triangles are congruent. So, <clears throat> and then we're just going to do corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That will show these two segments are congruent, and our proof is going to be done, which I kind of just did verbally for us anyway. So this will go pretty quickly. Um, we've already had it stated that uh, B-C is congruent to D-C. Now all I have to do is say that for these two blue triangles, that E-C, which is shared between those two triangles, is congruent to itself, and then we're going to be able to say that these two, um, these two right triangles are going to be congruent through, uh, due to some, some theorem. It has a couple of letters in its, in its name as an abbreviation, some about hypotenuse and something, something. So let's get that up there. So we have that reflexive property. Uh, I have my information marked, and again, these two triangles are going to be congruent. Uh, when you have this perpendicular angle, which uh, I'm going to kind of skip over the step of saying that's specifically a 90 degree angle, or that those are that's a right angle, we do have that these are right triangle due to the form that uh, due to the fact that we have these perpendicular lines. So, <clears throat> kind of abbreviating this uh, proof a little bit. So, how do you show that two right triangles are congruent with just a pair of congruent uh, legs and a pair of congruent hypotenuses? Oh, I, I just said it. That's HL. Okay, so then BE is congruent to ED. These are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, and we know that they are therefore congruent due to CP, CTC. And, uh, well, that means now that I've taken segment BD and cut it into two equal parts, which means that it's been bisected, and that's by simply a uh, definition of uh, segment bisector. And that's the end of my proof. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go to your homework.